2019 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, Town of Carmel. Um, <coughs> the board members' names are in front of you on the podium. On the left is Mike Carnaz, the code enforcement officer, and Greg Chichetti should be coming here shortly. He's our town council. Um, the way we operate is we'll, I'll swear you in when you come up to the podium. Please be sure to speak into the microphone, which I'm guilty of not doing right now because it's being recorded for uh, minutes and, and for the record. Um, so the secretary takes minutes from, from the recording. So I'll ask you to speak clearly into the mic if you're gonna speak. If you're gonna speak, I'm gonna swear you in unless you're an attorney. You let me know if you are. And um, the way we operate is we'll hear the case. Um, we'll um, listen to your case. So I'll ask the board members for any input or questions. And then uh, I'll ask for input from the public on the application. Once we close the, the hearing, no further input from the public or anybody else is, is uh, allowed at that point. So uh, will you all please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you everyone. Uh, first case tonight, all new applications, is uh, Frank Nagel for variation of section 15, seeking permission to retain existing shed properties located at 10 Kyle Court, Carmel, New York, 10512, known by tax map 44.14-1-67. You are, state your name and address for the record, please. I am Frank Nagel, 10 Kyle Court, Carmel, New York. Okay, uh, raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yeah. Okay, bring us through what you're uh, trying to do here. I'm trying to keep the shed where it's been for the last 30 years. Okay. Bas um, basically, that's it. <laughs> where is this short again? <laughs> so, been there for that long? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and, um, is there any property you can buy to bring it into conformance so you don't have to go through the variance? Uh, Excuse me? Is there any property you can purchase to, to bring this into conformance? Well, I could put it in the middle of the yard. But there's no property you no can purchase. Problem. So you're, you're landlocked there, correct? Yes, it's the cluster zone. All right. Um, so you said it's been there for 30 years. This was never picked up. Why? Because? I guess my fault. I didn't know I needed a permit back then when I put it in. Okay. All right, Shane. Now I know. Yeah, Same for me. <laughs> um, you talk to your neighbors? Yeah. No issues, concerns? No issues, no. And uh, you couldn't bring it more forward probably because right, the septic is over there? No, so there's no too? septic. Oh, there isn't. Okay. Um, kind of no way to put it. All right. Any input from the board on this application, John? Do you have electric going to the shed? No. <laughs> it's metal. That would be kind of dangerous. Yeah. I bought it from the Sears for $200. <laughs> That's a classic. Sears is closed now. Well, still up. <laughs> Why is this coming up now? Because <clears throat> they came and just uh, took, our, I guess, our neighborhood and started looking at all the properties. Okay, so you were picked up by the building department? Yes. Okay, that's it. No questions, thank you. No questions. No questions? No questions. All right, any input from the public on this application? I'll Okay, I'll look to close. The, I'll look for a motion to close the hearing on this Motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I failed to mention you guys could stick around for, for us to adjudicate at the end of the meeting and get your decision, or you can go home and watch it on TV live. Channel 95, I think, on uh, Comcast and 20, someone help me out, 20 something on Verizon. 24. 24. 24, there you go. The voice, the the voice from the back. <laughs> the man behind the curtain told and us. Then, uh, <laughs> or you could just call tomorrow and call Dawn or um, Rose in the building department. Or the uh, zoning, zoning department. department. Sorry. All right, next application, number two, Raul Orsini for a variation of section 15, seeking permission to retain existing freestanding deck. Properties located at 49 Ivy Hill Road in Hopac, New York, 10501. Tax map 74.43-1-6. Are you both going to be speaking? Um, we'll, we'll assume so. <laughs> All okay. right, state your names and address for the record. Uh, Raul Orsini, 49 Ivy Hill Road, Manpac, New York. And you are? Jocelyn Orsini, 49 Ivy Hill Road. All right, right hands, please. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Okay. Yes. Same situation. Bring us through what you're... Uh, 
what relief you're seeking here? Uh, so we have a, a deck that has a variance of two feet uh, from the neighbor's property. It's supposed to be um, 10 feet, built within 10 feet, and it's built within uh, eight feet. It's been there for eight years. Uh, is this, oh, there's a freestanding deck that's that's in the middle of the yard, right? So, <coughs> excuse me, just to clarify, it's supposed to be 10 feet, it's eight feet, they need a tube repair. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure that that was clear. <coughs> All right, how long has it been there for? Eight years. And you didn't know you needed a permit? No. I'll ask the same question. There's no other property you can buy to bring it into conformance? Excuse me? There's no other property you can purchase to bring it into conformance? You know, no. next door, you're all landlocked, so? No, no. Um, no septic. This is C-Core, no. right? C-Core over yeah, the door. So no septic in this area. Um, all right. What is the value of the deck if, if you had to relocate it? The value of the deck? I mean, when we did it, we paid 2500 Okay, so it'd be pretty, pretty sizable the cost if you had to relocate it. Yeah. All right, let's uh, go down here. Mark, any questions, concerns? It's like it's almost right in the middle of the yard. It's yeah. too bad they didn't know they could have moved it two feet. It would have been perfect. Still there? No. Okay. No questions. Okay. Uh, none of your neighbors spoke up about it. Do you have anything they could? No. I have nothing further. Thank you. Why is this coming up now? We're selling the house. Oh, you're selling. Yeah. Okay. So it came up on title search. Yes. I'm good, John. Thank you. Okay. Any input from the public on this application? I'll look for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second, moved. Second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Number three this evening is Maria Dimas. A variation of section 156.15, seeking permission to construct a deck around an above ground pool. Property is located at 63 Waring Drive, Carmel, New York, 10512, tax map 44.14-1-95. You are? Maria Demas. <coughs> you are? Antonio Demas. And your address is? S 63 Waring Drive, okay. Carmel. Right hands. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, bring us through your situation. Okay. So we'd like permission to uh, build a deck around our above ground pool. Just do me a favor. Sp yeah, speak up. It, it's We'd like permission to build a deck around our above ground pool. All right. So I'm, I'm glad you're doing this the, the proper way. Is asking for the permit first and not begging for forgiveness. Um, I was out there the other day. Um, it looks like you're pretty uh, shielded from the neighbors. There's plenty of woods back on that side. Yes. And you, you said you spoke to your neighbors on either side. And no yes, one had any I believe with it. one of our neighbors um, emailed um, Dawn as well to. Okay. Say yeah, okay. I think I remember seeing that. Um, there's no other property you can purchase to bring this into performance. The pool's already there, so obviously you want to make it suitable to the pool right. and useful. Um, John, any questions? Um, the stone wall that's over there, it's still there, right? It's still there. Yes. Yeah, so you have to move that around no, or it's, it's, it's clear? That stays. That's probably, I'm going to say, <coughs> 15 feet from the pool. Okay, all right, okay, I see. The drawing here looks like it's uh, right on top of the stone, that's all. No, that's that stone there is actually it, it dips down. That's, oh, I got gotcha. you. It, it's not. You're it elevated. Doesn't go up, right? So the post exactly. is closer in. Exactly. I got gotcha. you. <coughs> Looks nice. No, 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 no further questions. Uh, it's well screened and it's in the cul-de-sac, so I have no questions. No questions. Thank you. All right, the only thing I had too is when I spoke to you, you were going to talk to the builder, make sure your equipment gets covered. You weren't there, so. I assume right. you talk to your builder just just as a, a word of caution, you know, make sure that there's enough breathing room for your equipment and Right, because I think footings. actually the heater is not supposed to be under the deck. It's supposed to be, I, I think he had told me, but I'm not sure. I will find out. I, it should be okay, but uh, Mike, is, is that a, a, the deck is going over the, the heater and the uh, filter and all that? I as long as there's enough room. As long as there's a clearance, it'll be fine. Yeah, for operating so and maintenance and whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's not really for us to, uh, just as a friendly, right. you know, okay. from my construction yes. sense. Yes. Uh, no. Sorry, no, so it is there. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Propane. Propane. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <coughs> God bless you.
question. All right, Bill. No questions. Bill. No questions. No questions. No questions. Bill. 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 All right, any input from the public on this application? Going once, going twice. I'll look for a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second by? Second. Bill? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank Thanks, you, sir. folks. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, application number four tonight is Kevin Fahey for a variation of section 15615. Seeking permission to allow carport and sheds to exist less than the required side yard setbacks. The property is located at 54 Brookdale Road, Mohawk, New York, 10541, tax map 7416-2-46. Say that five times fast. Representing tonight is? William Bescher as representative of PDs. Address? My your, address your is address? 66 Shear Her Road, Mayapak. Right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll help you God. I do. Thank you. Bring us through it, Willie. Um, this is uh, an existing house uh, that's time for uh, downsizing. Uh, and they want to, before they will list the house, they want to make sure everything that's legal. There are two sheds on the property and a carport. I'm sure a couple of members of the board have been there and saw the carport. And the reason why the carport exists, is like the garage, you cannot get in it. I don't know, you know, that, that steep driveway, they kind of never use it, so they end up doing a carport on the side. And then there's the two sheds, one all the way far down, and the other one is on the top just for the, you know, the gardening tools. And if you notice, the property is extremely well landscaped. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, you know, Kevin's uh, passion is to do that, the, the landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, one of the items that uh, was brought to my attention, and I did not see it, is the carport does not exist 5.7 feet from the property line. It's 15 foot point seven. So the variance that we are asking for is a lot less. Mm. Um, if you notice on the survey, the survey put the one over the line of the driveway and it looked like 5.7. We really did not see it. And the, you know, yeah. uh, when we looked at it, it's like, wow, they, it looks a lot yeah, bigger. Yeah, the line's right over the line. Exactly, if you look at the survey that was given from the surveyor, Greg, would we have to re-advertise this? It's actually less of a, of a no, variant, so it doesn't matter. Okay. But we should, should have them. But yes, should initial. have to update the, uh, the application, the original yes, application. Yes, we, no. we should. Yeah, John, can you do me a favor and look for in the folder? Then I can have them revise the original. Um, so I was out there Saturday, I think it was. Uh, the, the property's meticulous, very uh, uh, and unbelievable. Very meticulous on everything every aspect um how long have the sheds been there for oh for as long as they remember i mean kevin moved in with his mother oh ages ago to take care of her the you know the old lady and uh it was everything existed for a long long time they put they put up one shed the big shed they put it up with they have they have a building permit for it mm -hmm. whatever that was completely done legally within the setbacks and everything else the other two sheds they existed there for as far as i asked him he said but they existed. I don't know who put them up. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no other property you can buy to bring it into conformance? No, there are no property available to them. There's no other place to locate these items. It's uh, already existing there. Um, and if you notice, the, the, the property, the type of slope, and, if you, and the houses on the neighborhood, they yeah, all have sheds. It's all and wooded in the back anyway. There's nothing. Exactly. They are already screened. There's a plenty of screening. It's really the, the property is self-contained. And like you said, it's very well maintained and very well kept. All right. Do me a favor, Willie. Right, you said 15.7 and 9.3 of a variance. Um, any input from the board? Uh, John, start down this I have way. No, no questions. Rose? No questions. No questions, thank you. No questions. No questions. No questions. All right, any input from the public on this application? I'll look for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion so moved. Second. Second by Sylvia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening and a happy Fourth of July. Bye, Willie. All right, number five, Robert Dixon for variation of section 15615 seeking permission to construct an attached garage. Property is located at one High Ridge Road, Mahopak, New York, 10541, tax map 76.9-2-27.1. Yeah, 
Good evening, folks. Correct. Um, state your name and Robert address. Dixon, 1 High Ridge Road, Mayapack, New York, 10541. And you are? Jamie Dixon, 1 High Ridge Road, Mayapack, New York. Right hands, please. Swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth, so what else you got? Yes. Thank you. All right, bring us through your situation. Well, basically, we just want to build a big garage to house our cars. Much uh, other than that, we just need a variance in order to do so. Kind of landlocked, big space that we park in now, but uh, you know, okay. not much you other spoke, land. You speak to your neighbors. On the other yeah, side. he has no, no, no problem opposition. with it. Um, there's no other property you can purchase, right? You're landlocked on. Yeah, we're both landlocked. Sides. Not at this time. I mean, if he ever sells. If he's ever offers, I'll bring it into conformance at that point, but <laughs> I can't right. bet on that, you know? Nah, that's <laughs> an unknown entity. Um, what about, um, there's no other design, right? Is it, you have septic back there? You can't we go do, there's back. septic right behind it, and yeah. the leach fields are just beyond that. Further. Okay, so you kind of like have no choice but to go on that side of the house. Yeah. All right, um, Mark, any questions? No questions. So this will replace the one car that's already there. You're going to overlap it in. It, yeah, it'll add on to it. Okay. That's it. And then you guys are, you're infilling, you're infilling where the garage was. Existing yeah, now. so the old garage isn't very deep. I drive a full-size pickup. She has a full-size SUV. We need the depth on both sides and the width to get right. the cars in. Okay. They're just oversized cars in a tiny garage built yeah, in the 60s. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know? Yep. Yeah. Right, thank you. I have nothing. Thank you. No questions. Johnny. Okay. Any input from the public on this application? I'll look for a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. By Second. Bill. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Uh, number six tonight, Mario Almeida. Variation of one section 15 seeking permission to retain existing freestanding one car garage and existing freestanding deck. Property is located at 41 Steiner Drive, Mahopak, New York, and tax map 64.9-1-4. And you are? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. I'm Frank J. Smith III on behalf of the Law Office of William Schilling, 122 Old Route 6, Carmel, New York. And we're right. here on behalf of Mr. Almeida. I do have a couple copies of plans if you guys wanted a larger view. an attorney, right? That is correct. So swear in. Okay. I finally got admitted. That was <laughs> a big accomplishment. Congratulations. Thank you. So the property in question is 41 Steiner Drive, Mayapack, New York. It's tax map number 64.9-1-4. Mr. Almeida purchased the property in 2008 in the garage in question. Actually, I should grab the other. Not sure many folks on TV will be able to see it, but it's worth a shot. Okay. And the garage that we're discussing this evening uh, was built in November of last year. The relief sought before this board is in the form of two area variances. First is for uh, side yard setback. The code requires 20 feet. We provide five feet, and we're seeking a variance of 15 feet. The second is for front yard setback. The code requires 40 feet. We provide 39 feet, and we're seeking a variance of one foot. I'd also like to make it known to the board that we're not seeking any variances in terms of the deck, um, other than the lack of building permit. Uh, my understanding is that the deck is fully compliant with the code. As the board knows, when determining an area variance, uh, you weigh the benefit to the applicant against the detriment to the neighborhood, and there are five factors to consider. The first is the adverse impact on the neighborhood, if granted. And in this case, there would be no adverse impact. Uh, structures like this are common, and uh, due to some of these areas' uh, property lot sizes, uh, setbacks are difficult to comply with. Second would be an adverse environmental impact, and in this case, there would be none either. Um, this is the most feasible location on the property for the garage, and due to that, uh, there are no environmental impacts. The third is whether or not the variances requested are substantial. 
When it comes to the front yard setback, it's not substantial at all. We're seeking one foot. Uh, when we talk about the side yard setback, it is a bit more substantial, but when you take into consideration how narrow the property is and the location of the well and septic system, uh, <coughs> this is just about the only place that it could be put. Fourth is whether or not the need for the variance can be obviated, and as stated, the dimensions of the property, the layout of the existing house, and the location, uh, there's also some rocks uh, and trees on the left-hand side of the property uh, would make it difficult to place the garage anywhere else. And the last criteria is whether or not the need for variance is self-created. And as stated, uh, this is the most feasible area for the garage to be built. Um, and if the board were to find that the need for variance was self-created, it is not determinative when you consider all five factors, and it's just one factor to take into consideration. <coughs> So for the foregoing reasons, we respectfully request that the board grant the two variances. I thank you for your consideration, and if you have any questions, I'll be able to answer them now. All right, so you said it was built a year ago? Correct, they November. Didn't, they didn't know they needed a uh, permit? My understanding is that Mr. Almeida was working with a contractor to construct the building, and that they put it up before the applications were completed and submitted to the building department. Was there any reason why he chose a commercial type of building, a butler building, which is typically a commercial um, style and, and as opposed to something that was vinyl sided to match the house or, you know, has a metal roof, I think, not a, a asphalt roof, which is typical and, and characteristic of, of the neighborhood. I mean, it, that's, I, from all the opposition letters that we did get, that, that seems to be the biggest complaint and I, I have to agree with it because it's, it basically sticks out like a sore thumb. I mean, if I lived across the street, I'd be just as upset as some of the opposition letters that we got, um, the theme in them as well. So, um, you know, that's just my opinion. I'm going to bring it over to the board members and see what their thoughts are. One question, Mark? Not yet. I mean, okay. Still there? I think you've stated well where my position on this is as well. So, it, it's, it's troubling, I mean, the type of garage yeah. that's there. You know, if this was a commercial zone, it be a whole different story you wouldn't have to you know it'd be characteristic of, of, of a commercial situation um, you know one thing I thought about as a compromise is if maybe if they changed the, the style of the siding and the roof on it at less cost than would be to remove the structure altogether um, you know it's something that I'm throwing out there but let's see what the other board members have to say I, uh, I wouldn't serve with people who are sleeping in the house Council, looking at the, um, the considerations for an area variance, and I understand uh, your position, but I think I disagree with all of them. So um, I just don't see how this is going to pass muster. And, and I thoroughly understand the board's concerns. I know that it is a steel building. Uh, it does not have vinyl siding. I wish I had the reason to give you this evening why that style building was chosen as opposed to a regular uh, stick-built structure. Um, but that was the structure that was built. Uh, if I were to guess, I would think that it's due to the ease of construction. Um, these buildings do go up a bit easier than stick-built buildings do. Uh, but again, I do not know the specific reason, and I take your input into consideration. Thank no, you. I mean, just the, in an aesthetic point of view, he could have made it connected to the garage, made a similar garage door, made it, you know, all the same siding, the same color, all the, the same color. style, material roof the same, you know, combine the roof line. Mm -hmm. It's just, I, it down. what's that? Shrink it down. Yeah, shrink it down so it, it, it's architecturally pleasing and make it level with the, right. the other thing. You know, it's like this thing just landed from the sky from, uh, you know, commercial planet <coughs> as opposed to a residential one, so. But um, it didn't. Someone actually put it there. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's as if. <coughs> Rose, do you have any? Um, John, input? I've been on the board 16 years. You've been on even longer than I have. Um, we have to the best of my knowledge, you can correct me, um, we have never um, approved a building, a structure, with a, an oversized garage door. And I've always, I have asked that numerous times over the course of the years. Am I incorrect in that, John? I don't think there's ever been a front yard um, oversized garage door. Yeah, not that I can recall, per se, but um, yeah, I don't what is the reason for that? Does he have a commercial vehicle in there or a truck or? 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the reason is for the size of the door. Um, I didn't think that that would be an issue raised by the board, but I appreciate your input. Um, but I do not know why the size is as <coughs> small as it is as compared to the yeah, existing the garage that's there. Yeah, it's very offensive to the neighborhood. Um, I could see why people are upset. Um, certainly to put a commercial building in a residential zone is inappropriate at best. Yeah, we received three emails from surrounding neighbors, the neighbor okay. directly across the street, um, one, two or three houses down. Okay, we'll get to you. Um, so, you know, we usually don't, if we get one, it's enough, but we got three, and okay. I, uh, unfortunately I was on a job site where I didn't have a printer to print them up. I don't know if anyone has them. Uh, They're in the they, folder, John. If they were shared. If, if you okay. want, I can read I don't counsel if, if it was copied to you. Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. I would love to you see a copy if possible, if, if you, you have an extra. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. <coughs> Just so you can see the, the caliber and the nature of uh, the complaints there. Just um, without going into them, John, I'll just, Diana Baker was one. She's directly across the street. And then she even took pictures of what her view is. Um, the second one was Barbara Collins on 26 Steiner. And the third was Joanne Perna on uh, 18 Steiner. Mm -hmm. Those are okay. the three that are yeah, in the Yeah, for file. the record, so that, that's, thanks for reading that. Yeah. Frank, is there any comment from the property owner uh, directly next door adjacent to the property? Not that I'm aware of. I, before this evening, I was unaware that there was neighborhood opposition, and I thought that if there would, we would hear it tonight. But this is the first that it's come to my attention. All right. Well, it's it's coming. So is this a rental property? Members. I'm not sure. I do know that Mr. Almeida splits time between Mayapac and North Carolina, uh, but I do not know if he has a tenant in there. Okay. And this came up because it was picked out by the building department, or? I believe they were filing for the building permit after the fact, and Mike, is that correct, or was it flagged? Yeah, I think Dennis actually got a complaint and went out there. Oh, Dennis got a complaint, he went out there and uh, told Mr. Almeida to get a building permit, they came in and that's when we found and out it was before. Okay. okay, so he's not selling the house or anything and it's being brought Not up. to my knowledge at okay. this time. All right, John, anything? Uh, just uh, an area of concern is the, the metal shed, the roof, uh, drains down into this uh, small opening of a space between the existing house structure and the metal shed. That that appears to be about a foot and a half or two feet. I don't know if you, you I know see the proximity. That yeah. That, that um, poses a hazard uh, for runoff. It, it also poses a hazard, you know, of space, you know, between the two uh, and debris collecting and uh, what else can happen in there. I don't know. There's not a detail of what's happening with the runoff or protecting that from an uh, 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 um, uh, animal or a child walk getting wedged in there. You know, it just doesn't seem right. Yeah. In addition to the, everything that you said, I echo all your comments. Okay. I don't know if there's uh, a code for that, uh, Michael, I don't know, on other structures that are separate, because that's not connected, correct? There's not, no connection. Correct. It's its own yeah. freestanding building. It's almost as if you'd have to put some kind of lattice or something in between to prevent the child or somebody getting in there. Wow. But no way to maintain it. Yeah, and the yeah you can't maintain too. the space. It's going to fill up with ice every winter. Yeah. Mm. All right, just uh, not, not a very clever laid out plan in, in my opinion, my whole my years of construction. Um, so at this point, any in more input from the board? No All right, I'll, I'll look for input from the public on this application. Come on up, state your name and address for the record, please. And just speak clearly into the mic. So my name is uh, Ray Baker. I live across the street, number 42 Steiner Drive. Swear to tell the truth. Raise yes. your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. All right, thank you. So uh, Mario, myself, and my family were all friends. And this was put up in November. No questions was asked. Um, I know he's looking to sell. He moved down to Carolina, he told me. Uh, I confronted him two weeks ago and says, I'm not signing anything. This is not a building that belongs there. It's an eyesore. I pulled down my driveway. I see it. He's got two huge spotlights coming out every day. Uh, he, he built it. He has a, a lift in the garage. He does mechanical work on it. Uh, my fear is he is going to sell the house, and if he sells it to somebody that does mechanical work and works till 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, he disrupts my family, number one. It is a commercial piece of property on a residential street. It's a private street. It's a cul-de-sac. 
the neighbors that we've been there, uh, I've been there 23 years. Uh, everyone else, we're all friends. Mario was also, he still is, but I just can't, I can't say yes to this. This is affecting my property. Not only that, I have other letters from other neighbors too, affecting them also. You know, again, it's a residential piece of property, I'd say, I'm sorry, a commercial piece of property on a residential street. It's not a, a parking, it's not a garage. You put your car in there, it's a garage to do work in it. Um, I, I don't feel it, it doesn't belong there. I, I prefer not to see it there. Um, it's an eyesore. You know, the decks in the back are perfectly fine. Yep. I have decks in my house. We did work recently. Everything's all approved. I go to the right ch channels. But this here, unfortunately, you know, against everything, it doesn't sit right with us. And we're all upset with it. You know, he was going to live there. He put it up. We never said boo to him. Even now it was put up. You know, we made comments, but it was what it is. But now he's looking to sell and move out and leave us with this. Not going to happen. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate would your you, input. Would you like these other letters? Yeah. Um, if there are additional letters from, yes, from, the from what we have, yeah, we'll submit that for the record. <coughs> This is from Rosanna Diaz, and it looks like it's in opposition. I'm not going to read them all because they're kind of lengthy. And this is Linda Cooley? Cooper? All right. And just to quickly read it, it looks like it's, you know, let the count. Count another, I'm against the variance. Okay. So that's, uh, if you guys don't mind, we'll put, just put that in, in the folder. Oh, sure. One. All right. Anybody else in the uh, public have any input, questions, concerns? Okay, um, I, I guess I just want to bring it up, what I said before, I mean, a potential way to rectify this is to side it and connect it to the house and, you know, if that's, if that's an option. But I'll, I'll give you, I'll afford you uh, some rebuttal if, if you'd no, like. No, no, I was just going to say that I appreciate the board's input. I was unaware of the opposition that was out there. Um, as you guys know, you can condition the grant of the variance, and I think our client would be open-minded that um, if there were some things that you would like to enhance that building uh, we would be very interested in hearing that from the board um, but for the time being uh, this is what I have and I appreciate your comments thank you all right thanks for your input thank you all right I'll look for a motion to close the public hearing motion on this application close. seconded by Second. Bill all in favor aye. Aye. aye okay thank you guys <coughs> all right and finally this evening Number seven, Jerry and Jennifer Tesler, variation 15615, seeking permission to construct attached garage and mud room. Property is located at 26 Dixon Lake Drive, Mahopac, New York. Tax map 54.5 1 67. Joel, Chair, representing? We have some people leaving. I'm recusing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm also recusing. All right, note for the record Silvio and Mark are both recusing themselves from this application being heard. Joel, you. Feel comfortable proceeding? Yes. Okay. Um, Joel Greenberg, uh, 2 Musker Road, North Mahopac, New York, architect for the architect for the uh, applicant. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not to put the truth, so I hope you got I it. I do. Thank you. Okay. If you've been out to the property, it's a fairly level piece of property, as you can see from the, uh, from the uh, survey and site plan. Uh, there's an existing garage here, which uh, my client wishes to convert into a master bedroom suite, and we're just basically putting the garage in the front, and if you uh, have been out to the site, you'll see that. Uh, the proposed garage is at the end of the existing driveway, so you can pull directly into the new garage instead of having to make the turn. Uh, and uh, that's basically it. And we just have a small covering over the front entrance so that it's not, uh, it's more weather resistant when you, when you try to get the key in the, in the uh, door and you can't do it in the middle of a snowstorm. And that's it. Uh, here's the front elevation. This is the floor plan. This is the existing house here. This is the, both the existing garage is converted to a master bedroom suite. This is the uh, new two-car garage. And as I said before, it's right at the end of the existing driveway. So there'll be basically no change to the entrance to the property as you're going back to the rear of the house. And uh, that's basically it. All right, no other property you can purchase to bring it into conformance? No, as, as you can see,
these are the lots along Dixon Lake, uh, Dixon Lake Drive. They're also, they're fairly narrow and fairly deep, and there are houses all around us. <laughs> Septic's in the back? Yes. Uh, fortunately, we're lucky here. The well is up front, and the septic is back, way back up over here. All right, and the driveway's on that side anyway. So and the driveway's already there, correct. We're not changing that. All right, it's so not very significant variances. Have you spoken to the neighbor, especially on the right? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Tesla has, and uh, there's been no opposition, and uh, there's been, I spoke to Dawn today, I spoke to Dawn today, and there's been no letters or any comments from any of the neighbors. Okay. All right, input from the board, John? Uh, just, you know, from the photo, Charles, there appears to be a, uh, a wooden deck uh, behind the existing uh, master bedroom. I don't see it on your plan there. Is that, is that remo being removed? Is that staying there? No, it's staying there. That stays there? Yeah, yes. You're still, that's still attached? Yes. And uh, just, are, are you repaving the uh, driveway? Is the driveway changing at all? No. No further questions. Sorry. Yes. You've seen the photo. Yeah. Looks close. Well, it's a freestanding deck in the back, right? Was there a pool yeah. there? Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. No questions. No questions. Thank you. No questions. All right. Any input from the public on this application? I don't think so. All right. I look for a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close. Seconded by. Second. Thank you very much. In favor? Aye. 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 Have a great holiday. All right, you thank too. you guys. Thank you Safe holiday. You too. you too. Thank you. All right, uh, at this, we'll go straight through, right? You guys yeah. don't need a break? No. No. no break. Um, at this point, we're going to adjudicate. I'll ask the board members to come back to the podium, and uh, there'll be no input from the public at all on any application at this point. Okay. This is the voting se session of tonight's meeting. Um, on application number one, Nagel, I'll look for a motion. Motion Mo to grant. Second. Seconded by Richard Silvio. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Granted. All right, number two, Orsini, I'll look for a motion. Motion to grant. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, number three, Dimas, looking for a motion. Motion to grant. Second. Second. Second by Silvio. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, granted. Uh, number four, Fahey. Motion. Motion to grant. Second. Second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number five, Dixon. Mo motion. <laughs> Looking for a motion. Motion to grant. Second. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, granted. Number six, Al Almeida, motion? Motion Mot to deny. Second. I have a second. All right, any discussion? Yeah. If you look, if you look at the, uh, the, consider the, the five factors that we need to consider for an area variance, will it, an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties be created by granting of the variance? That's a yes. yes. In my it's vote. proven by the neighbor who spoke tonight. Yep. Uh, number two, can any other method be used that does not require a variance but still allow for the benefit requested? Let, let me put that in abeyance for now. Is proposed variance substantial? I believe it is, yes. Four, will the proposed variance have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district? That's a yes. And five, is the alleged difficulty self-created? I believe it is as well. So balancing all of them in four out of five, if you want to look at it that way, I think that this is a uh, motion that it should be denied. Okay. That's my reasoning as well as why I put it out there. Exactly the same. Any other discussion? Nope. No? Pretty good. Rose? Yep. All right, let's do a roll call just to play it safe. Mark? Uh, for, for the, the motion. motion. Yes. For the motion. 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 And I'm for the motion as well, so it's unanimous that this gets denied tonight. Okay. Um, number seven, Tesler. I'll look for a motion. Motion to grant. Seconded by? Second. Rose, all in favor? Aye. Okay. I abstain. <laughs> I also abstain. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, minutes from May. 
23rd, 2019. I look for a motion to accept. Motion to accept. Any discussion? Oh, seconded by Bill. Any discussion, concerns? Uh, I think everyone was here, so. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Have a safe Good and vote. happy 4th of July, John, Independence Day. John, vote on it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> vote, for the vote for the minutes. Oh, I thought we did. No, you just took motions. Yeah. All in favor? All in favor. All in favor, sorry. Aye. <laughs> all right, it's been a long week already, jeez. Thank you all. All right, thanks guys.